Hi everybody, Jeremy from the Snowboard Asylum here and today we're just going to do a short video on doing a boot fit at home. Now over the past few years we've seen a massive increase in the number of people buying snowboard boots online and to be honest with you, just the way things are at the moment, uh, I can't see that doing anything but grow massively. Now, easy and convenient as it is to do a boot fit in your own house, the big downside of that is you're not going to have a trained boot fitter there making sure that you get the right fit and asking the right questions. So the whole purpose of doing this video is just to kind of give you some tips and advice, point out the things that the boot fit is going to ask you and the boot fit is going to look for to make sure you maximise that fit. Now, the big issue with doing a snowboard boot fit at home is a snowboard boot isn't designed to fit like a traditional boot or shoe. If you kind of fit a boot in the same way you would with one of those, uh, you're going to have all sorts of problems down the line with it. Um, so what we're going to do in this kind of series here is first off, uh, we're just going to do a boot fit and talk you through the things that you're looking for to make sure you get a boot that's the right size. After that, I'm going to just run through the five key different styles of, of snowboard boot closure systems. Um, each one of these has their own idiosyncrasies and their own kind of tips and techniques to really make sure you get a really good foothold and therefore um, improve fit and performance. So to start with, let's take a look at doing a boot fit. So the first thing we're going to do is just run through a boot fit as we would do it in the store. Um, this is just going to give you an idea of the, the tips and things to look for uh, just to really kind of optimize that boot fit. Um, so starting point, um, now it's going to sound a little bit obvious, but get the boot out the box. Um, when you've got the boot out the box, you, what you need to do is unlace it. Now, unlace it as far down as you can. Uh, now, say unlacing it just sounds a little bit obvious, but what you need to do, you make sure you're kind of undoing the lace all the way down. And the reason you need to do that is that a snowboard boot that's just come fresh out of the box, because it's got a lot of forward lean built into it, it can be really difficult to get into. So um, if you kind of loosen it off as much as you can, you'll find that kind of slipping it onto your foot a lot simpler. Same as the uh, internal like, lacing system, just crank that down as much as you can. Just give yourself as much of an opening to slip your foot in there as you can. Also, you just want to double check, shove your hand in the boot just to make sure that there's no uh, paper shoved in the end. Most snowboard boots just come with uh, paper shoved all the way to the toe cap just to kind of keep it open in transit. So just kind of make sure you've removed that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just slip your foot into the boot. Now, the big tip here is when your foot goes in, unless your foot's really crushed up at the end of the boot, don't automatically think that the boot is too small. Uh, we're not looking for how this boot fits stood up. We're looking for how it fits in the riding position. And the two are very different. So don't panic if this boot feels too tight to start with. Uh, it may be too tight. It may not be. But uh, we can't really tell until we've got it laced up. Okay, so get the liner laced up first. So just push this tongue back into place. Just give it a little pull. Just make sure it's not bunched up at the front of the boot and it's just sitting properly. Once you've done that, push it back into the foot and lock yourself in. Next, uh, the lacing system. Just uh, make sure you're kind of pulling up all that looseness that you kind of created when you uh, loosened the laces off at the beginning. So just kind of pull them tight and work that tightness up from the bottom. Once you've got that tension up there, give them a really good pull and lock it off with the, the lace lock. Tuck this out of the way. Now, once you've got that liner laced up, just give the heel of the boot a little kick back. Now, what that's going to do is just locate the liner into uh, the back of the, the shell. Okay, so then we need to start working on the, um, the outer laces. Again, as with the inner laces, just work that tension up from the bottom of the boot. 
Now, the reason it's important to do that is that if you don't uh, tension up from this point here and you just pull these bits tight, these parts of the lacing stay loose. And then as you're riding and you're flexing uh, into the boot, that flex is just gonna um, even the tension off through the lace. And if it's loose here, that looseness is gonna work its way up through the whole lacing system. And uh, the boot's just gonna become looser as you ride through the day. And then what most people do to compensate for that is they just crank the binding straps up tighter and then you end up crushing your foot and riding in a lot of foot pain. And the reality is a lot of people's foot pain is purely and simply down to the fact that they don't lace this part of the boot tight. Um, so just make sure you're aware of that. Okay, so then once you get to like the middle section of the boot, this is kind of the key element of the lacing because it's it's this section that's gonna lock the heel back into the shell and give you all the control when you're riding. So just make sure you kind of put a lot of tension across this lacing area in the middle. Most boots will have um, a kind of heel retention system that works here that's either just gonna pull in tight here or even loop through the shell uh, into the heel. So the more tension you get on this section, the better your heel hold's gonna be. And then keep that tension late on the laces as you go up through the eyelets. And then a traditional bow just to kind of finish it off. Now with a lot of um, traditional lace um, snowboard boots, uh, these eyelets are generally a little bit bigger than they would be on a traditional boot. And the reason they do that, it lets you just do a double lace around them and that lets you actually lock off tension zones in the boot. So you can have it super tight here, do a double lace wrap here and then loose at the top or, or vice versa. It just kind of gives you options to tension the boot. Uh, as we're doing it here, we're just going for the fit. So um, it's really just kind of uh, evenly tensioned all the way throughout. Okay, so now in this upright position, uh, your ideal fit and what you're looking for is your toes just to be touching the front of the boot. They don't want to be compressing in, but they just want to be touching the front. And the reason we're looking for that, as I said earlier, is that we're not looking for the fit in the standing position, the fit is in the riding position. So if this feels all right and you can just feel the front of the boot, the next thing to do is just relax forward into the shell. Right, this re relaxing forward is then just putting you in that riding position. When you drop into that riding position, what tends to happen is like the heel of the boot slips back a little bit and just gives you a bit more room at the front of the boot. Um, really what we're looking for in terms of size in here is in that riding position, this boot almost wants to be the same length of your foot. You don't want any empty space at the front of the boot and you don't want any space at the back of the boot. If you've got empty space at the front of the boot, uh, what happens when you drop into this riding position and your foot moves back, this kind of void here is just left open. So when you then go onto a toe side turn and you're putting the pressure on the front of the foot, the pressure will move your foot to the front of the boot and release you from this kind of heel hold here area here. So your heel's gonna flap around, and then what you're gonna end up doing is just riding with your toes crunched, trying to stop your foot moving around inside the shell. And kind of having a boot that's too big can actually be sometimes more painful than having a boot that's too small. So like I said, we're just looking for almost the perfect fit there. If you stand upright, toes should just touch the end of the boot, relax forward into the shell, toes should just come back and give you a little bit of kind of breathing space around the front of the boot. If that's perfect, then shell length wise, that's bang on. Now, what you've also got to look at as well is just how this boot feels on your foot. Uh, every kind of snowboard boot has a different type of feel to it. And those feels just really match uh, the shape and size of your foot. Some boots, if you've got a really wide foot, it's gonna feel like it's crushing your foot. Other boots, if you've got a narrow foot, it's gonna feel like your foot's slipping around in, inside the shell. Now, a really good way to tell if that kind of uh, overall feel of the boot is right for your foot shape is just to do a quick check on what the heel hold is. So the easiest way to do that is just roll onto the toes of both boots. And as you roll onto the toes, what you're trying to look for is that the, the as you roll forward, the foot and the boot comes up as one single unit like this. 
if that's coming up as one single unit, you've got a good enough heel hold on there uh, for the boot to work really well. What you're trying to avoid is like your foot moving up and then the heel of the boot following it afterwards. If that happens, then you probably need to look for a different kind of shell or something that's a little bit narrower around the heel cup. But if that overall feel feels great on the length and um, the heel's coming up as a single unit when you rock forward onto the toes, sizing wise, that's probably perfect for you. So what we're going to kind of run through next, this is... Uh, how you size up a traditional lacing boot. Uh, next, we're going to go for a single boa. With a single boa, the sizing and uh, the rolling forward is pretty much the same. Uh, it's just uh, there's a few idiosyncrasies in terms of the closure that's going to make it work better. So the next boot that we're going to take a look at is the single closure boa system. Now, sizing and trying this boot on is exactly the same uh, as with the traditional lace boot. Uh, the only real difference here is the closure system. Uh, so the single boa system has like a single closure point here, which if you dial that, it closes uh, the full length of the boot. Now, the key to getting this boot to work properly is just making sure that boa closure system is operating efficiently. So when you're trying it on, pop the boa out, and that's going to let you kind of flex the boot forward and kind of loosen off the tension. Now, on the liner, uh, same thing applies. Just loosen this off. Again, if you don't, it could be quite tricky to get on. So slip your foot into the shell. Um, and as, as, like I say, sizing-wise, it's exactly the same as a traditional lace. You're just kind of looking for that kind of toes just to push the, uh, brush the end of the boot when you stood up. Uh, and then the heel cup should come back. Now, the kind of reason that I'm kind of showing you the boa system is uh, there are a few tips with this system here. What it's very easy to do is just crank this up here tight and go, right, that's tight enough. Uh, the problem with the single bow, although uh, this has kind of changed quite dramatically over the years and it's a lot uh, better for this now, is that uh, it doesn't evenly lace the boot. So uh, I'll show you this kind of facing straight on, uh, which is kind of a little bit easier to see. So as you pop this shut and start winding, if you just watch the speed difference between the lace here and the lace here as it moves and it closes in. So to start with, you get in kind of a lot of tension all the way through. But see how fast this is moving relative to this here. So what you end up doing, especially when you get to the tighter parts of the boot, you end up with the boot being really tight across here and not so tight down here. Uh, like I said, with the sequence system, it's a lot better, but uh, there is a few tips just to make it work even better. And it, it's relatively simple to just to maximize that tension, is that when you've kind of tightened it, tightened it up, just flex forward a few times, give the boot a quick pump as you flex forward, and that's then going to shift that tension through and you'll find that the dial will lose the tension. Uh, tighten it up a little bit and then flex forward again and then give it a quick tweak. And really that's all you need to do to maximize that. If you don't and you just let this tighten up, it's pretty much the same as with the tension on the traditional lace. If it's not as tight down here as it is here, as you're riding that tension will move and the boot will loosen off. And then what you'll tend to do is just kind of crank the strap a little bit tighter. So just remember with the single boa, when you tighten it up, once this like dial goes tight, give it a really good couple of aggressive flexes forward. That flex will just even the tension through the lacing and you can just kind of tweak it back up again. Uh, the key to remember with the boa as well is you can just keep tightening this till it's over tight and then it's just going to end up crushing your foot. As soon as you feel that your foot's held securely in the boot, you can stop winding it up. You don't need to crank it super tight. So the next boot that we're going to take a look at is the dual boa. So the dual boa is a zonal closure system, which means you've got two boas on the boot. So the side boa controls the lower part of the lacing. The front boa controls the upper part of the lacing. Now, with all the other boots, um, the, the actual fitting, trying on and sizing up of this boot is exactly the same. So same processes apply. Um, 
Now, when you kind of trying it on and lacing it up, uh, there's a few tips that you need to look for. So get the boot foot in the boot. Just always make sure when you're trying this on that this side bow is popped out like it wasn't then. Just, it just makes your foot slip in a little bit easier. So just give that tongue a pull just to kind of get it pulled up. This one's got um, a power strap, so just kind of knock that closed and then get that kind of internal lace in, tightened up. Again, work from the bottom, just making sure you're getting even tension up through the whole liner. Uh, lock that off and then kind of get those out of the way. Okay, then to fasten it up, as you can see there, it's the coiler system. So the wire's wound in itself uh, most of the way. So pop the side one in, tighten up the side one first. That side bower is just gonna close this section of the boot. Just pull your foot back into the right position. So once that's tight, there's not a lot of play on that bower, so you don't need to crank it super tight. Pop in the top bower and just close up the top bower. Now, as with the uh, single bower, it's worthwhile just to kind of give this a quick couple of pumps forward, just to kind of even that uh, lace tension, and you see it will just go a little bit more, and that's just going to give you the perfect fit. Uh, the double bower system really is now becoming the kind of standard system for a lot of boot brands. Uh, that zonal control just works really good uh, in terms of fit and tensioning. So, uh, chances are this is probably one of the boots that you're going to be trying on at home. So the next system we're going to look at is what I kind of refer to as a hybrid. And that's kind of a traditional lace system, but with a boa controlling the heel hold. Now this style of boot is generally a favourite uh, for freestyle riders. Uh, purely and simply because it kind of allows you to kind of just have total control of um, the tension over the front of the foot. So you can run uh, a relatively loose lacing setup just to kind of give you flex and mobility. But you can still do that without compromising heel hold because you've generally got a um, heel retention system which is controlled by the side bower. Um, over the front of the boot um, and what that does that's just going to kind of lock the heel back in place and just let you mess around with the tension um, via via the lacing system now like as i said with kind of um, all boots just make sure you kind of uh, loosen everything off as you can see there that's kind of what i'm talking about with kind of paper stuffed in the liner so just check that there's nothing in so again uh trying on and sizing with this kind of boot exactly the same uh, as with the other boots um, there's just a few tips and hints uh, when you kind of lacing it up so again just pop your foot into the shell um, first first things first just get that kind of liner kind of tensioned up again make sure you work that tension up from uh, the bottom of the, <laughs> the the liner and then just fasten it tight now on this boot, uh, it's got what we call a power strap that just kind of gives a little bit more tension in the front of um, the tong, uh, lets you kind of, again, control that flex. You can kind of run this super tight just to give you a little bit more of a dynamic setup or looser to just give you a little bit more mobility. Okay, so with the hybrid boot, the first thing you want to do is just kind of get this heel retention kind of locked down. Just make sure where you've got a strap like on the Vans boot that's sitting over the front of the foot. Crank this down and that's going to lock your foot into place. And then uh, you've just got the traditional lacing system there. Just bit, and so you can just like, work that kind of lacing tension up from the bottom as we did with the kind of other lacing. Just make sure that the lace is tight all the way through the boot. Um, like I said, this is kind of generally... Um, preferred by a lot of kind of freestyle riders who are just going to kind of customize the tension of the lacing. So um, this is just really kind of important when you're trying the boot on for size and for fit that you just kind of get that even tension up through the lacing and all the way through the boot. When it actually comes to um, how you ride, you can mess around with this tension just to create the optimum flex for the boot. So uh, that's the hybrid system. So like I said, just kind of get this side one cranked up, get that heel locked back into place before you lace up the front of the boot.